What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hey, how you doing? My name's Chris. I've been reselling for 18 months now and I've just finished my first end-to-end -end financial year, which has been really exciting. It's been a really big proud moment for myself just to simply know that I've been able to do it all by myself and actually get to an end-to-end -end and get some results. And now I have a baseline. So that means now I'm ready to move into FY23, which is the next financial year here in Australia and see what I can do. And in doing so, I wanna set some goals. I wanna set some focus areas and some things that I want to improve and try to do better in for the new financial year and see if we can grow the business. If you haven't watched my end of FY22 results, go check it out. But here is a spoiler. This is how much money I did. And here's all the stats on a single page. As you can see, and you can rank it for yourself, to me, this was excellent. This was great because I had no baseline prior, but now I have a baseline. And as I said, now it's a chance to see if I can beat this and I wanna take you through what I'll be focusing on. And maybe you can learn something along the way and maybe you can do a little bit better in your business too. So let's get into it. So I've got four focus areas that I wanna really focus in for FY23. And that comes down to time management, cash flow, business scale, and numbers. Now, if you are new here, I love the numbers. <laughs> Trust me, we're gonna get into that shortly. But I've really taken some lessons from the last financial year and I've come back and seen that there is some things that I need to improve and some things that I wanna track better and do better and actually take action on to see if I can do better overall. So kicking off first is time management. So what I'll be doing this year is I'm tracking my time, you betcha. I've literally already made a spreadsheet of how I'll be tracking this and you can kind of see it already, but essentially I'll be breaking down and tracking my listing, my photos, my sourcing, my packaging, my picking, my planning, my admin, and then that will give me a total. And then from those totals, essentially what I'll be doing is comparing it against two metrics, and that is opportunity per hour and also profit per hour. So every day as I list, that will show me how much I'm listing into the store and how much value or how much opportunity I'm putting into the store or on eBay. At the same time, I'll also be tracking what sells that day and the profit that I've made. Now, obviously it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning my average cycle time at the moment is around 30 to 35 days, which means it's gonna take me a good 90 days to get a really good bearing of how my time is actually flowing over into the results. But at this point in time, as we start, it will just give me a good sense of actually understanding how much my time is worth. And that will then start to be even clearer after the first 90 days. If you've got any questions about this, please ask. And if you've got any questions along the way, please ask. But essentially the reason why I wanna do this is as I start to build a baseline, because I do not have a baseline, but I'm expecting after six months of getting into this financial year, so come back in December, I should be able to see that I've got some time and then I wanna see it start to drop. Meaning I wanna see if I can spend less time and do the same, if not more in terms of results. And how to do that? Well, that's some of the other goals and we'll get to that in a second. So let me know if you time track, how do you time track? I am using and experimenting a few different things of how I'll be time tracking it this year. But at this point in time, I'm just using my stopwatch on my phone because it's usually with me all the time that I'm doing things. Just got to remember to press start and pause. The next focus area is cash flow. Now, if anyone's been around the channel for a while, you know, I love to talk about cash flow and especially profit first. And this year I'll be doing it again, using profit first to ensure that I've got a really good cash flow in the business. And I want to take you through some numbers because last year, this is where I landed in terms of the different buckets that I was putting my money into. Every time eBay pays me, I was putting it into owner's pay, into profit, into OPEX and into tax. This year, I'm changing those percentages because now I've got a bit of a run rate. And I'm also changing one other thing too. So this year, this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna be doing owner's pay for 42%, we're doing profit at 1%. And then I'll be doing OPEX at 47%, tax will be 7.5%, and I'm adding a new bucket called boost. Now at this point in time, it will be 2.5%, but also at this point in time, I'm not 100% sure what I'm using this for. I've got a couple of categories that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about using it for superannuation. I'm thinking about to enable me boosting my postage supplies, just because they've changed how the banding operates here in Australia. And the other consideration is, could I be using it to actually pay for fuel and things like that? But at this point, I wanted to allocate it to the side because it's something that I want to use and leverage and see if I can do it over time. It's not much over per week, but over a long period of time, it could pay some dividends and really just help me expand the business. I've got a little table here that will show you what it looks like from if I get $1,000 a week, if I get $1,400 a week, or if I get $2,000 a week. That's probably the operating range on a regular basis. And as you can see here, this is what it looks like on a weekly basis. However, if we play that out to an average perspective, which works out to be about $1,466, which is where I probably hope to land on an average perspective, then you can see what a week would look like, what a month would look like, and possibly where the year's gonna look like. So that's cash flow. If you have not checked out Profit First, 
go check it out. It is the best thing I did for my business and get an accountant. If you want one, go check out Ethan. Now the third point and the third focus area is business scale. And there's two areas to this. I wanna pay someone part-time to do some work for me. Now, that's not gonna happen from day one. I need to work into that process, but I have a goal, I've been planning for it, and I'm already in discussions of making that happen. But I would like to allocate a certain amount of dollars every week to be able to have someone do something. I've already started to do some planning and having some discussions around this and what that could look like. But until I have all the finer details and what that looks like, I won't share any more. But at this point in time, it's definitely a goal for this financial year. And the other thing for the business scale is actually having a new space for listing and for posting. If you don't know this already, I currently only have the same spot that I do my listing and my postage, which means if I want to list, I need to make sure I don't have anything of the postage set up in the way, or if I want to post, I can't have any of my listings or anything like that lying around. So it's always a bit of a shuffle. It's always a bit of a juggle. I want to change that. I want to make sure that I have both existing stations ready to go, that I can come in or someone else can come in and just hit the ground running. And the fourth focus area for this year, this financial year, is numbers. And this is where we get into a bit more of the detail. And there's a few different areas that I really want to touch on here. And I'm not trying to be super ambitious because I feel like some of the other areas I've discussed about, some of those are actually going to play into some bigger numbers anyway. All of this connects, all of this plays its part. But different levers and different things that I toggle and adjust will obviously have a huge benefit at the end result over a long period of time. And it's not going to happen from day one. These things are going to take time to implement. So this is what I'm thinking. I want to grow by 5%. And what I mean by that, and it's probably the easiest way to look at it is from a revenue perspective. But all round, I want to be 5% further than where I was from this year. And that might not seem like a lot, like it works out to be about $73,287. Whereas this year I landed around that 69 mark. So it's not a huge increase. However, there's some really quick ways that I can reach this. And also there's going to be some other levers that I think will actually help me get past this. And number two is actually, I want to see if I can lower my fees. Currently they're at 18.6% for FY22, which means that's pretty high. And that includes advertising fees as well. So promotions, which means maybe I can start to bring that down. Now, you're probably asking, why do I have them so high? Well, that's just what I've always done. So I want to start to play with this a little bit, but also it might mean the types of items I'm selling, meaning I don't have to promote them as much if they're moving out the door quicker. So I want to test that more and see if I can lower that 18.6% fee. The other area that I want to try and toggle and play with and lower is expenses. At the moment, my other expenses outside of the, the usual things that eBay takes into account, such as fees and postage, is currently sitting at 9.75%. If I can start to drop that as well, it's gonna have a big part to play in the bottom line. And then the fourth area that I really wanna focus on is sell through rate. And this actually surprises me. And then this one actually would enable me to get potentially my 5% growth just instantly. So in the last financial year, if I had increased my sell through rate to 40%, it's currently 30% at the end of FY22. That opportunity would have been around $4,883 based off the amount of stock that I purchased and the amount that I sold and then taking into account average sale price. It would have worked out to be about $4,883, which meant that would probably have got me to the 73,000. So right there is the 5% increase. Now, what I'm trying to play here is if I can do the 5% growth just by doing things better in general, picking better items, selling better items, and ensuring that I have a good throughput of those items, well, that's gonna help me get the 5% growth. But then as I start to lower my fees, as I start to lower my expenses, and also try and improve my quality of listings in terms of the items that I'm selling, I'm going to start to see that 5% move pretty quick in the right direction. Well, that's the hope anyway. So that, that's really my focus areas for this year. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear the questions you have. Or if you have a comment, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to continue the conversation. And if you've got some goals and if you've got some things that you want to try and improve this year or want to try this year, do let me know as well. I would love to hear because, look, these are just things that I've been thinking about, things that have been playing on my mind, and I definitely don't have all the answers. So you guys, the community, are doing some amazing things by yourselves already. And you probably don't even realize that you've got some pretty hot tips as well. So if you wanna share them, I'm not saying you have to, if you wanna share them, leave them down below and share them with everyone else or challenge us to see what you're going to be doing and see if we can help each other and spur each other on. That's it from me, really do appreciate you being here. I'm wishing you all the best for your next financial year and uh, yeah, let's get it, it's exciting stuff. Cheers.